let's look at making planks using microvoxels. And in a previous tutorial, I showed how to make those. So if you are not sure how to get these, either grab them from a swap meet. You should be able to find something similar in most swap meets. Or go back and refer to the earlier tutorial. So the microvoxels are actually larger than a normal voxel size. An actual default voxel size is that orange one right there. And you can see when you click the select tool or even hover it over, uh, you can see that default voxel size is smaller than what these ones are. One way to make planks, and as in most things in Landmark, there are many ways to do everything, is pick a microvoxel and just look at the spaces between it and its neighbor and figure out how big a space do you want between your planks. The very biggest ones have very, very narrow spaces. You might want something a little more obvious, like around there. So pick one of these guys. I'm going to copy it out and just paste it a few times in a row. And don't worry if you accidentally skip the space, you can go back and repaste. All right. And then we are going to copy this whole row and paste it here and here. Now, this makes really thick beams, not great planks, but as we saw in the previous tutorial as well, remember what the line tool does. The line tool kind of forces a voxel um, down to where the top of a default voxel should be, assuming that you place it all in a flat plane. If you don't place it in a flat plane, it would actually draw a line, which is its intended function. But if you place it completely flat, so there's no line that can be drawn, it tries to draw a line, doesn't, and what it actually does do, however, is force any voxels on that plane to line up with that line. And you see what happens there. These guys got all flattened down. Do that a couple times. Usually about three is plenty. And you'll see now if I move my select tool around, it now matches up perfectly with the top of a voxel. Although, looking at it from the side, you can see the bottom is still stretch below where a normal box will be, but the top is where that is. So you can see already this is looking more plank-like. And I'm actually going to just select these, cut, and copy them a little higher up in the air. I think it's easy to work with because I want to do the same thing with the line tool on the bottom. And again, just about three times. So now you can see I have thick planks like that. So that is one method of making very thick, easy planks. Move this down a little bit again. There we go. <clears throat> um, the what you can now do is you can use microvoxel pegs, which is just a microvoxel that is the height of one voxel, but it is stretched down to uh, the top and bottom of where a normal voxel, sorry, it's, a, it's stretched up and down to where the top of the bottom of a normal voxel would be, but width-wise it is much smaller. And you could stick these in between these planks, but use the remove feature to create a little unevenness if you wanted. You don't want perfect planks. And if you offset where you're placing them, you end up with kind of a wavy look. Oops. Careful right near the ends because that will pull the end in. And by using different widths of these, you can vary that up a fair amount. If I use a super thin one, for example, then that would actually cause that space to draw closer together.
and occasionally you might get a little dimpling like that, which you can do the line tool trick on to smooth it out. That usually means that the pegs you're using weren't perfectly, um, perfectly smooth. Sometimes it's uncooperative, as in this example. But usually enough times we'll fix it. Also, once you paint it something non-shiny, it's going to be much better looking. Um, let's use a wood paint. And you can see that looks pretty nice there. Now, maybe that's still a little thick for you. Um, remember, all voxels get their shape changed by manipulating their neighbors. You could choose to make the space in between these to be the plank. So if, instead of choosing the solid part to be the plank, you were looking at, do I want the plank to be this thickness between? You can totally do that too. Let's, actually, let's draw a line here. Float it up a little bit for convenience. And draw a line of wood color. And paste this guy along the top. Oops. Use tweak mode if your aim is as bad as mine. If I copy that below, you can already see what's happening. You can see that the top of this plank here, the wooden plank, has been forced to be as wide as the line that I put above it because neighbors always have to touch, neighboring boxes always have to touch. And when I do the same thing below, you can see the same thing happened. Now I copy this guy out. I have a narrow plank. As so, this is great for docks and things. That's how I think I did the docks in my beach house. And you can do various things to make these irregular as well, but it's going to be a little trickier because you're going to need something that's the same height as that gap between them. Um, otherwise, you'll end up pulling the surface upwards as well. For example, if I took a normal size voxel and used the remove tool in the middle, yes, it will make those come apart, but it will also stretch them upwards a bit. So, I mean, if you want something that irregular, you can totally do that. Um, but it doesn't necessarily look great for all occasions and using the smooth tool is not going to help you because or pardon me using the line tool is not going to help you because the line tool is going to pull that surface up to where a normal voxel would be so you see the whole thing gets raised and then you get back to having fat planks so you're going to need to either play around a lot um, to get different voxels of this height with different widths or go to a swap meet to find a board of them and play around, uh, which works too. Uh, but that's just a basic tutorial on making planks. Um, depending on what size microvoxel you use, you end up with different widths. You can do a lot more complicated things, um, and I would recommend if you want to do fancy fancy warped planks and stuff for your Halas builds. I would recommend watching some of the tutorials by uh, Tenma and Murin and all those guys um, because they've gone into a lot more detail with advanced techniques but many of them you do need to pick up some stuff from swap meets and I try and avoid doing tutorials that require you getting things from swap meets um, so I'm just going over the basic principles. What they would show you though is basically the same idea uh, 
just with more variation. Um, so that's some blanks. 